بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين السلام عليكم my dearest brothers and sisters and welcome to this episode of Pillars of Islam with me Dr. Mehwish Akram Qureshi I start with the name of Allah. I praise Allah and thank him for the blessings of Islam. I ask Allah to raise the rank of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So inshallah, in today's lesson, I'm going to continue to talk about the second testification of faith. And a reminder, the second testification of faith is Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, which means I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah, okay? So amongst what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us about, okay, because we believe in him as the Prophet of Allah. We believe that he was truthful in everything that he conveyed. He informed us about the presentation of the deeds. And today I will give further details regarding this. Allah Ta'ala revealed in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Isra, Surah 17, Ayah 13 and 14, which means that on the Day of Judgment, a book will be bought out and be given to every single person. Now, it's not known whether it is like the book of today or is it just a piece of paper or pieces of paper. But on this day, every single person will have a book in their hand, either in their right hand or their left hand. Yalqahu manshura, literally, a person will meet his book. And it is a book that is easy to read. There are pages that have writing on them. And it will be clear for every person to read because they will not be folded. So everyone will be able to read their own deeds clearly. It will be said, Ikara' kitabak, an order, read your book. That book which has been compiled for your, spe for your sake specifically. Ikara' kitabaka. كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا Today, you are enough of a witness for yourself. You don't need witnesses because every single good deed that you performed, it is written and every single sin that you unfortunately committed is written down in this record. Here are your deeds recorded in full. So bear witness that this is all your own doing and you will be held to account for it. This is a record of your whole life. Two angels write down the deeds that a person does in this life. The angel that writes down the good deeds is called Raqib and the angel that writes down the bad deeds is called Atid. Now, Allah mentioned in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Haqqah, Surah 69, Ayah 19, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَيَقُولُ هَاءُ مُقْرَأُ كِتَابِيَهِ Which means, as for the people who receive their books in the right hand. Now, this is a good sign. The Muslims, they will receive their books in their right hands. These people, what will they say? They will say, They will turn to whoever is with them, to the people who are like them, who have received their book in their right hands. And they will say, look, look, read my book. Read my book. Like when you pass an exam and you get a good mark, you want people to see. This is what it will be like. 
This is what is mentioned in the Quran, that these people, they will be jubilant, joyous. They want people to read their book. He is, who's given his book in his right hand, what will happen? They will also be questioned. However, the fact that they received their books in the right hand is a sign that they're being held to account for any sins that they did will not be a strong hardship for them. The purpose of this questioning will be to make these people know the great mercy and generosity of Allah upon them because they will not be exposed for any sins that they committed and they will instead be forgiven. Just as Allah mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Inshiqaq, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ فَسَوْفَ يُحَاسَبُ حِسَابًا يَسِيرًا Which means, those who are given their books in their right hands, their questioning of their bad deeds is something light. وَيَنْقَلِبُ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا In Surah Al-Inshiqaq, verse 9, that this person turns to those who are similar to him with happiness. Now, as for those who receive the book in the left hand, it is mentioned in Surah Al-Haqah, Surah 69, Ayah 25. وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ They receive their book in a humiliating way. In their left hand, which is behind their backs, and their right hand is clutching their necks. In the Qur'an it is mentioned, وَأَمَّا مَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِشِمَالِهِ فَيَقُولُ يَا لَيْتَنِي لَمْ أُوْتَ كِتَابِيَهِ Which means, the people who receive the books in their left hands, these people will say, how I wish I hadn't received my book. How I wish I hadn't received my book at all. And how I wish that I didn't know what my state was. In Surah Al-Haqah, How I wish that I had died in the world and that was it. How I wish it had all been over. In Surah Al-Haqah, وَمَا أَغْنَى عَنِّي مَالِيَا That which I used to own, that money, it did not protect me. My money did not save me at all. هَلَكَ عَنِّي سُلْطَانِيَا In Al-Haqqa, verse 29. My dominion, the control which I had over people. I had a certain weight in my community, amongst my family. All of that means nothing now. Because I did not receive my book, because I did not receive my book in my right hand, but I received it in my left hand. On that day, when this happens to a person, they will have nobody to turn to. On that day, as mentioned in Surah Abasa, Surah 80, Ayah 34, Yawma yafirru al-mar'u min akhi. One brother, siblings, one brother will turn away from his sibling, from his brother. Wa ummihi wa abih. A person will be repelled from their mother and their father. Wa sahibatihi wa banih. And one's wife. And likewise the other way around. One would be repelled from his wife and children. 
Why? Why? Because as mentioned in the Quran, Because each person will be preoccupied with his own concerns over the concerns of others. Because now this is it. What happens to their brother or their sister or their father or their mother or their husband or their wife or their children doesn't matter anymore. My dearest brothers and sisters, the one who wants to be safe on the Day of Judgment, they need to strive and work for that which is rewardable, what is accepted by Allah. This is what a person needs to do. What benefits a person on that day is to have the fear of Allah in this life. This means to perform what Allah made obligatory upon you and to stay away from what Allah made unlawful haram upon you. And all these matters, the obligatory matters, the sinful matters are only known by learning. A person may have been very wealthy in this life, but he chose to spend his money on what Allah made unlawful. But on that day, on the day of ultimate justice, a person cannot buy a place in paradise, regardless of how much wealth they had in this life. On that day, the regret of sinning, the regret of disobeying Allah, will not benefit a person. It's too late for regrets then. Imam Ali radiyallahu anhu, he said, اليوم العمل وغدا الحساب which means today in this life, in this life we perform the deeds and tomorrow in the hereafter we will be held to account for those deeds. Today in this life is when regret benefits a person because they can ask for forgiveness, they can do something with that regret. But tomorrow in the hereafter, regret does not benefit them. As mentioned in the Quran in Surah An Naba, Ayah 40. Yawma yanzuru al mar'u ma qaddamat yadah, wa yaqulu al kafiru ya laytani kuntu turaba. Which means on that day. Every single person will find what they have prepared. Whatever a person has prepared in this life for the next life, this is what they will see. The disbeliever will say, how I wish I was soil, how I wish I had been turned to soil so that I didn't have to experience what is in store for me now. That is, whatever a person has prepared in this life for the next life, this is what they will see. The disbeliever, he will say, how I wish I was soul. How I wish, the disbeliever, he will say, how I wish I was soil. So that I didn't have to experience what is in store for me now. Subhanallah. Now, everyone is presented their deeds and in Arabic, this presentation is called the Hisab. The Hisab also includes all Muslims and non-Muslims hearing the actual eternal and everlasting kalam of Allah. The eternal and everlasting speech of Allah, which is not a letter, a language or a sound. They will understand from the kalam of Allah that they are being questioned about what they did with the endowments that Allah granted them. So the pious believer who used the endowments that Allah granted him to do the good 
will be greatly pleased by this questioning because they will be honoured by this questioning. As for the non-believer, they will not be pleased because they will not have any good deeds that are rewardable in the hereafter. Instead, the non-believer would practically be about to die from the severe sadness and anguish of that situation. As for the sinful Muslims who hear the kalam of Allah, some of them will be happy and others will be sad. Indeed, in a Sahih hadith narrated by Al-Bukhari and others, the Prophet wasallam said, مَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا سَيُكَلِّمُهُ رَبُّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ تَرْجُمَانِ Which means, there is not one of you except that his Lord will speak to him without letter or sound on the Day of Judgment. And there will be no interpreter between his Lord and him. So, people will be held to account by hearing the kalam of Allah and also by way of being presented their book of deeds. Now it's important to note here that the kalam of Allah has two meanings. It can be used in reference to the revealed books such as the Torah in Hebrew, the Quran in Arabic because these books were not authored by an angel or a prophet but rather there are books which are written in Allahul Mahfuz, which were revealed by the command of Allah. And the phrase Kalam of Allah can also be used in reference to the attribute of Allah, which is not a letter, a language, or sound. Just as was explained by Imam Abu Hanifa, one of the Imams of Ahlus Sunnah wal Jama'ah. In his book, Al Fiqh Al Akbar, on page 2, in which he said, Allah is attributed with kalam, but his kalam is not like ours. He continued to say, We speak through organs such as mouth, lip, tongue, and with letters which have exits. Imam Abu Hanifa then said, Wallahu ta'ala. يَتَّكَلَّمُ بِلَا آلَاتِ وَلَا حُرُوفِ And Allah's kalam is without the usage of organs and without letters. He then said, وَالْحُرُوفُ مَخْلُوقَهُ وَكَلَامُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى غَيْرُ مَخْلُوقٍ And the letters are created and the kalam of Allah is not created. In other words, all the languages like English, Arabic, Urdu, Persian, French, and all letters and sounds, they are all created. They all have a beginning and an ending. They're in need of the one who brought them into existence. They are in need of the one who created them. That is, they are in need of Allah. So this attribute of Allah, this swifa, this kalam of Allah is not a letter, is not a language, is not a sound. The kalam of Allah is an attribute of Allah by which he orders and forbids. We must attribute kalam speech to Allah because it was mentioned in the Quran in ayah 164 of Surah An-Nisa. The kalam of Allah was also mentioned in the ahadith of our honorable prophet and it is confirmed by the intellect because had Allah not been attributed with the attribute of kalam, it would mean that he is attributed with the opposite, which is being mute. And this is a defect. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is free of all defects. Allah revealed in the Quran several ayahs in which it clearly states that Allah is not like the creation. For example, Surah An-Nahl, Surah 16, Ayah 30, وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى which means Allah has attributes that do not resemble the attributes of others. In Surah An-Nahl, Ayah 74, فَلَا تَضْرِبُوا لِلَّهِ الْأَمْثَالِ Do not attribute to Allah the attributes of the creation. In Surah Ashura, لَيْسَكَ مِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ 
There is absolutely nothing like or similar to Allah. All of the attributes of Allah exist without a beginning and without an ending. So, the kalam of Allah, the speech of Allah exists without a beginning or an end. It does not resemble our speech. It is not something that we can imagine in our minds. On the Day of Judgment, Allah will create within the creations the ability to understand His Kalam. Now this ability to understand His Kalam will have a beginning and an ending. But whilst the creation possesses this ability, they will hear the kalam of Allah which does not have a beginning or an ending and it is not something that can be imagined as it is not created. This like the fact that people who are in paradise will see Allah during certain times. In other words, Allah will create within them the ability to see him, to see Allah. And they will then see Allah who exists without a beginning and without an ending. Without this seeing being as a result of looking in a particular direction or looking in any direction. We cannot imagine Allah in our minds. This is because whatever we imagine in our minds, it has a beginning and an end. It is created and Allah does not have a beginning and does not have an end and is not created. For example, if I asked you right now to imagine a red car and then a grey elephant, then a black ball, you would know that each time you imagine something in your mind, then that image by definition is existing after non-existence. In other words, if I imagined the red car, then when I imagined a grey elephant, the image of the red car went. And then when I imagined a black ball, the image of the grey elephant went. And like this, every other thing that I imagine, it's created. It comes and goes. And whatever comes and goes, what has a beginning and an end, is not Allah. It is the creation. It is created. Allah exists without a beginning and without an end. He created time. And so he is free of time. Time does not lapse upon him. He created place and so is not bound by place. When there was no place, he existed. And after creating the place, he exists without a place. Allah is the creator of everything. And everything other than him is the creation. And Allah is not like his creation in any way whatsoever. Just as Imam Dhunun al-Nusri said, which means whatever you imagine in your mind, Allah is different from it. So that is the end for today's lesson. I hope you can join me in the next episode where we will continue talking about the meaning of the second testification of faith. And I urge you, my dearest brothers and sisters, to listen to these lessons to download these lessons from YouTube, to listen to them on repeat. This is religious knowledge. This is the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion. And teach it to others. Uh, send them the links for the classes, for the Ikra YouTube link. And tune into the channel every week. I hope you can join me and spread the word. Barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.